Hello and welcome to FD, where today we're looking at some of the season's best bargains. As we don't want to reel off the same names, you won't find Elise, Livramento or Alibar here, but keep watching for the transfers we think deserve more credit. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. 10. Martin Erdegaard When Arsenal spent £32 million on Martin Erdegaard last summer, instead of £35 million on Buendia or £60 million on James Madison, many thought it a false economy. The Norwegian had been tidy if not spectacular in a six-month loan spell, producing just three goal involvements in 14 games, and it was unclear if he could impose himself on Premier League football or whether he'd simply drift through games like post-peak Mesut Ozil. Contrary to pre-season predictions, the Gunners have blossomed into top four contenders, with the 20 three-year-old bagging eight goals and assists to date and becoming the team's most consistent performer. He leads his team by miles in chances created and passes into the box, trails only Xhaka for progressive passes and presses more than anyone else at the club, wrestling the number 10 spots from Emil Smith-Rowe and helping transform the side's style from stale boring possession into quick attractive combination play. Whether Arsenal can regain Champions League football or not, the team is clearly on the right track and has the youngest squad in the division. For the first time in half a decade, the sun is out in North London. 9. Emmanuel Dennis Promotion, relegation and three managers along the way, it's been a fairly typical season for Watford. But at least there's been some enjoyable football along the way, with Saar, Cucho and Pedro helping the club rack up more XG than five other teams, and Emmanuel Dennis announcing himself as a major talent, with the Nigerian producing 14 goals and assists so far, or 48% of the Hornets total. That's more than every Man City player bar Mares, but even Watford mustn't have expected this much from Dennis, who was only their sixth biggest transfer this season at £3.6 million and joined after five years in Ukraine and the Belgian Pro League, never hitting double figures in league play. But the 24-year-old has made an art of getting high-quality shots in the Prem with an average XG per attempt of 0.13, the same as Mo Salah, as well as completing 2.5 dribbles a match and making the most pressures at Vicarage Road. Not bad for someone who costs less than Spurs pay Eric Dyer each year. Linked with a top-flight stay at Newcastle or even Villarreal, Dennis deserves better than a season in the Championship. 8. Mark Kukurea when some backup left backs in the Prem, like Alex Tellez and Marcos Alonso, cost north of £15 million, getting a starter for that price is impressive work. And Mark Kukurea, who arrived at Brighton for £16 million in 2021, has been the Seagulls' most used outfielder this term, the 23 year old missing just 300 minutes and adapting quickly to a more physical league, vital in an up and down campaign on the south coast. An education at Barcelona might raise expectations for Kukurea's attacking output, but the Spaniard has just one to date and is more grafter than magician. Heavily involved in build-up, he's top of the squad for progressive passes and fourth for balls into the final third, also ranking in the top 15% of fullbacks for forward dribbles. And while you might expect these numbers to be strong given that Graham Potter's back three formation puts him higher upfield, Kukurea can defend too, coming away with the ball in over a third of his pressures as well as completing 60% of his tackles, meaning 85% of fullbacks get beaten more often than he does. Given his age, recent arrival in the league and Brighton's full from a positive XG difference last season to a negative one this year, it's easy to be optimistic about Kukurea's future. This looks like another triumph for the Seagulls. 7. Arno Danjuma It may seem premature to name Arno Danjuma in R10. After all, the Dutchman has played under 50% of Villarreal's league minutes this season and the Conference League seems to be beckoning for the Yellow Submarine, currently sitting 7th in Spain, 3 points off Europa football and a massive 12 away from 4th spot. But nabbing a potential world beater is the jackpot for the Spanish outfit and if it costs an injury hit season and £21 million, it will have been worth it. Besides, Danjuma remains their top scorer despite fitness issues, with 11 league goals and assists working out to a contribution every 122 minutes and in the Champions league he's been better still, delivering 7-7 seven seven starts to help the club past Juventus and into the quarterfinals. That basically repays his fee and in entertainment he's been worth the price too, with over 3 shots a game and 2 dribbles into the penalty area per 90 to sit 3rd in Spain and 5 nutmegs in the league already. He may already be 25 but with just 140 career games to his name, Dan Juma could well retain his pace longer than most players and Villarreal have him signed up until 2026. Together they could do something special. 6. Odson Eduard Unfortunately, we can't include Crystal Palace's Michael Elise in every video, so today we're highlighting his teammate Odson Eduard, who joined the Eagles for £15 million last summer. The Frenchman was part of a spending spree which moved the club's average age from oldest in the Prem last year to fifth oldest this term, and he's impressed with six goals and three assists so far, only bettered by Conor Gallagher. 
Edouard's 0.55 xG per 90 is the best at the club and 15th best in the Prem, sitting between Mason Mount and Jared Bowen but his time under Brendan Rodgers at Celtic has also rounded out his game, with rock-solid pressing and dribbling numbers. Most promisingly, he looks an ideal replacement for Ben Teke, winning plenty of aerials and regularly receiving forward passes, helping Palace rack up more touches in the final third in the opposition box than last year, as well as take 1.5 extra shots a match, from over a yard closer to goal on average. With another summer of strong recruitment, Palace could aim for the top half in 2023. If they get there, Eduard will be the one powering them. 5. Piero Hincapié Bar Leverkusen's complement of centre-backs promised at least one stellar season this year, but while Tar is the established name, Tapsoba the bright prospect and Kasunu the headline signing, it's been £6 million Ecuadorian Piero Hincapié who has caught the eye, most frequently partnering Tar at the back as well as featuring on the left for Die Werkself. At just 20, that's exciting stuff, and despite the position changes, Hincapié's strengths have transferred from role to role. His long passing can't match up to his rivals, with five a game to Tapsova's 13 and Kasunu's 10, but he manages more forward passes overall, and when deployed wide, shows reasonable mobility, completing nearly a dribble a match and regularly carrying the ball into the final third. More importantly, he has great defensive instincts, putting up five tackles and interceptions per 90, and 44% of his pressures see him win the ball. Good for third in the Bundesliga ahead of Deo Upamecano. In the 29 games he's played this season, Leverkusen have averaged two points a match and lost five, compared to six defeats in ten without him. When Tapsoba inevitably departs, they won't miss a beat. 4. Jose Sarr it's a running joke that Wolves are almost as restricted in their transfers as Athletic Bilbao, refusing to sign anyone who isn't Portuguese. But that worked out for them last summer, bringing in Jose Sarr from Olympiacos as a replacement for Roma-bound Rui Patricio, essentially swapping the 33-year-old stopper for a £3 million profit and a player five years younger. At £7 million, league average would have been good enough for Sarr, but the keeper, who has won titles in his homeland and Greece, has had an amazing debut season. Only City, Liverpool and Chelsea have conceded fewer goals than Wolves, and while that's a team effort, Saar has been the most important part, allowing 11 fewer goals than XG would predict, the biggest positive difference in Europe. With a save percentage of 83%, Saar is 4% better than the next best in the Prem, Eduard Mendy, and he's kept a clean sheet in 36% of his appearances, a better rate than Patricio managed in any of his three campaigns in the Midlands. He's also third in the league for claiming crosses, with his contribution overall taking the club from an expected points tally of 37 to an actual mark of 49 at the time of writing. For a player yet to be capped by his country, that's miraculous. 3. Tammy Abraham an underrated English player is a rare thing, but Three Lions international Tammy Abraham changed clubs at 23 last summer for just £36 million, less than half the fees rumoured for Darwin Nunez and Alexander Izak this year. It was a strangely poor sale from Chelsea, yielding a small fee for a man who already has four seasons of top flight experience, double figures in four separate league campaigns, and 103 goal contributions in 159 senior starts. But Roma won't be complaining. At the time of writing, only two players in Italy have more goals and only three are better off when you factor in assists, while XG indicates there's more to come, suggesting Abraham should have 22 contributions instead of his current 18. But while his finishing is lacklustre, he's doing everything else right, taking three shots a game for the third year running, averaging over one key pass per 90 for the first time, and hitting new heights for defensive actions and dribbles, earning him a new nickname among some Giella Rossi faithful, Tre Punti Tammy, or Tammy Three Points. Despite all this, he's still not guaranteed a place in the England squad, but with rumours of Arsenal and Manchester United interest growing, perhaps 2022 will finally bring Abraham some respect. 2. Matteo Guendouzi Arsenal fans may be glad to see the back of Matteo Guendouzi, but there's still plenty of reason to regret letting him go. The Frenchman, still just 23, is now a fully-fledged international with his first goal for Les Bleus, but will join Marseille permanently this summer for just £10 million, a quarter of his peak market value and less than a £3 million profit on the fee the Gunners paid originally. That's an embarrassing return on a youngster appearing for the world champions, and Guendouzi's club output this year suggests there's much more to come. 
standard or more advanced role by Jorge Sampaoli, he's grabbed 9 goals and assists, or 1 every 3 games for OM. And given the keys to run possession, he relentlessly drives the team forward. FB Ref's data putting him in the top 5% of all midfielders for progressive passes, carries and entries into the penalty area. That's pushed Marseille up to second, ensuring that Guendouzi will be playing Champions League football next year, as well as potentially at the World Cup. In a strong field, this could be Arsenal's worst sale yet. 1. Josko Gvardiol A topsy-turvy season for RB Leipzig looks set to end with a top 4 finish and the second best defensive record in Germany, the Red Bulls allowing a miserly 13 goals in 14 games since the appointment of Domenico Tedesco to average 2.1 points a match and clamber from 11th to 4th. And if there's one man behind that, Tedesco aside, it's Josko Gvardiol. Handed the impossible job of replacing Konate and Upamecano, he's played more minutes than anyone barring Kunku and Galachi, chipping in four goal contributions from centre-back while winning an unbelievable 5.5 tackles and interceptions per 90. In fact, the 20-year-old Croatian, one of just five centre-backs under 21 to earn 1,000 minutes in the top five leagues, leads his team in passes, long balls, final third entries, defensive actions and recoveries while unbelievably ranking second in Leipzig for dribbles completed, managing more successful take-ons this term than Jack Grealish or Richarlison. For £17 million, Leipzig have picked up a player with true world-class potential, dominant in every statistical category and sure to fetch a fortune when he departs. Red Bull will hope that day is several years away. So those were our 10 best bargain buys this season, but what did you make of our selection and do you have any shouts yourself? Let us know in the comments below and we'll get discussing. As always, always, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave it a like, and why not click on screen right now for another great FD vid. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.